Hello there, my fellow Aspect Warriors, and welcome back to another lore video on the diminishing but still proud alien race known as the Eldar. If any of you were looking forward to a specific section of the Eldar lore, I bet this is it, and it is one that we're gonna start covering today. Ladies and gents, I give you The Forces of the Eldar, a miniseries where we will talk about all the different units of the race from the Howling Banshees to the Dire Avengers. But we're not gonna focus on those today, and instead talk about the warriors known as the Striking Scorpions. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Striking Scorpions aspect are one of the deadliest Eldar warrior aspects. Following the fall of the Eldar, Asurmen, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, the first of the Phoenix Lords was the Eldar who led the Craftworlds away from the ancient homeworlds at the time of the fall, and it was he who founded the first of the Aspect Shrines. He established the first one, the Shrine of Asur, on the world of the same name. Those attending the Shrine of the Striking Scorpions are the manifestation of viciousness and merciless death. Maybe the most sinister aspect of the Striking Scorpions is the legacy of their chaos-corrupted former master and Phoenix Lord, Ara, the father of Scorpions. This was the ability to stalk the shadows and creep ever closer to the enemy, before falling upon them like the wrath of the Eldar God Cain himself. This is a legacy that often leads them close to the burning anger and bloodlust that could see their very souls consumed by Slanesh. The history of the Striking Scorpions is unfortunately shrouded in infamy from their very beginning. The founder of their aspect shrine, Ara, was lured to darkness and betrayed Asurmen and all the other Phoenix Lords, by bringing demons into the first shrine to wage war upon his fellows. Those loyal to Asurmen were defeated and scattered among the stars, but Ara himself would eventually flee into the webway, becoming the fallen phoenix burning with the dark light of chaos. In his place rose Karandras, a striking scorpion's exarch and Ara's greatest pupil, who would give the striking scorpions their current form by tempering their murderous nature instilled by their former master with the patience necessary to become consummate hunters. Karandras would be responsible for spreading this new teaching and installing new striking scorpion aspect shrines on many Eldar craft worlds. These guys are one of the Eldar warriors dedicated to close combat, particularly close combat during infiltration missions, in which they must first close with the enemy undetected before unleashing their wrath. Many striking scorpions are physically more powerful than the standard Eldar, and can even match their Dark Eldar counterparts for sheer physical prowess. The signature attack of the Striking Scorpion is made by the weapon pods housed on either side of their helmet, known as Bandy Blasters. These are small, short-range laser weapons used to deliver a deadly sting in close combat, that can be triggered psychically. Compared to their closest cousins, the Howling Banshees, the Striking Scorpions are not as swift, but instead more adept at moving through dense terrain, using every available nook and cranny to lie in wait for the enemy before unleashing the attack. Only those Eldar of strong physique can become Striking Scorpions, in order to wear their armor and wield their weaponry. They are also known for their use of a shuriken pistol in one hand and a scorpion chainsword in the other. Striking Scorpions also make use of the Scorpion armor, a suit of aspect armor offering somewhat superior protection compared to the aspect armor used by other Eldar warrior aspects. The scorpions are best deployed to deal with tactical situations in which they must face off against large numbers of the enemy troops who are weaker than they. Their unusual physical prowess for Eldar allows them to successfully battle foes head to head that most Eldar, even other aspect warriors would avoid like Imperial Space Marines or the larger and more powerful specimens of the Orcs. A squad of striking scorpions typically numbers between 5 and 10 warriors, one of which is the Exarch. The squad can easily fit into a Wave Serpent transport for more rapid movement across the battlefield. Some notable striking scorpion shrines include 
the Hidden Strike Shrine, the Obsidian Claw Shrine, and the Stinging Shade Shrine. Every aspect shrine of the Eldar is led by an Exarch, an Eldar who has been called permanently to the path of the warrior. This guy has traveled so far down the path that he or she can no longer weave it and so dedicates himself or herself fully as a high priest of Cain in service to the aspect of the war god that he or she represents. The Exarchs wear more elaborate and ornate versions of aspect armor which incorporates the spirits of their past wearers, granting an Exarch not only wisdom and knowledge stretching across the millennia, but a raw pool of potent psychic energy that can be used in combat. This permanent acceptance of the Eldar's so-called War Mask provides Exarchs with enhanced skill and dedication to their craft, and entitles them to access their shrine's oldest and most advanced war gear. Striking Scorpion Exarchs often incorporate the use of several different specialist weapons, including a monomolecular toothed version of the Scorpion Chainsword called the Biting Blade, a claw-shaped gauntlet called the Scorpion's Claw, and a larger weapon known as the Chain Saber. But more on those weapons in a couple of minutes. These Exarchs often lead their squads from the shadows, using them to shield their approach from the enemy. The Scorpion Exarchs also train their squads to flow silently and without a trace through dense terrain on the battlefield. Ara is the only Phoenix Lord to have ever been completely lost to the Eldar and his shrine when his murderous nature ultimately overwhelmed him and led to the consumption of his soul by chaos. This transformed him into a life-destroying monster like the Dark Eldar. It is believed that after he began walking the path of damnation, he fled to the dark city of Komora, where he became the first Dark Eldar Incubi Hierarch, and founded the first Incubus Shrine. Ara is also believed by some Eldar to have survived into the present and become Drazar, the Master of Blades, the greatest champion of the Dark Eldar Incubi. The last suspected sighting of the Fallen Phoenix supposedly occurred in 928 M41, when Drazar and Karandras were seen dueling for 17 days among the ruins of the ancient world of Zandros. The outcome of this duel is unknown. The war gear of the Striking Scorpions includes... Like all the Eldar aspects, Striking Scorpions wear lightweight synthetic bodysuits, reinforced with plates of psychosensitive bioplastics that will instantly harden to resist impact. The plates can morph their shape in accordance with the wearer's movement, meaning that the armor never encumbers the wearer in the slightest, providing good protection with unencumbered mobility. The aspect armor of the striking scorpions is similar in construction to that of the other aspect shrines, but it does incorporate heavier, rigid armor plating for increased protection. While the extra weight of their aspect armor means they are not as swift as their howling banshee counterparts, the protection it provides is superior. Contrary to popular belief, the small domes and blisters on the striking scorpion's aspect armor are not extra gems, but small compartments containing the suit's technical systems. A tabard or penance are a common addition to the striking scorpion's aspect armor as well. Its runic inscriptions name the shrine for which the Aspect Warrior is fighting, and identifies that shrine's allegiance to its particular craft world. Regardless of the craft world of origin, the Aspect's color scheme is always green, with differing patterns of yellow, black or orange, depending on individual shrines. The Aspect Helmet Each warrior aspect has their own distinctive helmet and within each shrine the helmet may vary in form slightly, with correspondingly more elaborate versions for the shrine's exarchs. A standard striking scorpion warrior helmet is distinctively tall and swept back, incorporating a pair of weapon pods positioned and shaped like the mandibles of a scorpion. Each of these pods houses a mandible blaster, or mandy blaster, a unique and deadly device also known as the sting of the scorpion. The Mandy Blaster is a very short-range weapon, useful only at a distance of about one foot, but highly effective as a first strike weapon which can be used to disorient or kill an opponent before combat is joined properly. The weapon is activated by a psychic pickup in the helmet, and fires a stream of tiny metallic needles straight into the target. 
The needles do not inflict a lot of damage themselves, although in the case of unarmored targets they can tear and lacerate flesh. Instead, they can act as a conductive medium through which the striking scorpions deliver an intense laser energy sting. In battle, the striking scorpion is assisted by an advanced targeting computer system. This finds and tracks multiple foes, feeding the target information directly to the aspect armor helmet display. It is likely that it can also differentiate between an enemy and an ally. A striking scorpion helm also includes wide spectrum viewing, allowing the warrior to not only spot an animal hidden underwater, but to see the workings of its internal organs. By custom, it is this helmet which marks the aspect warriors as the protectors and avengers of their craft world. It bears the striking scorpion's aspect rune traced upon its forehead. The Scorpion OX Pattern Chainsword This is the customary weapon of the striking scorpion's aspect, a vicious blade with diamond toothed edges which can mangle and tear flesh. It allows them to make the best use out of their unusual physical might. It is the first among the ritual weapons of the striking scorpions, and these distinctive chainswords bolster the strength of the user considerably. The Scorpion's Claw This one is a gauntlet-like weapon containing a built-in shuriken catapult. It is sheathed in a power field, enabling the wielder to tear through even the thickest battle blade, much like an imperial power fist. It is only utilized by the striking scorpion's exarch, however. Another couple of weapons unique to the Exarch are the Chain Saber and the Biting Blade. Chain Sabers are twin chain blades mounted in gauntlets, each incorporating a shuriken pistol. This allows the user to deliver a short-range fossil aid as he leaps at his opponent, followed by a series of lightning-fast attacks. The Biting Blades are much bigger, two-handed close combat weapons, which increase the strength of the wielder considerably at a cost of fewer attacks. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you on some of the very first Aspect Warriors of the Eldar, aka the Striking Scorpions. I will, hopefully, get through all the forces of the Eldar eventually, but as far as the next one is concerned, I will be making a poll and let you decide. Are the Striking Scorpions among your favorite types of Aspect Warriors? What do you like or dislike most about them? Let us all know what you think about them in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all a great day. Isha's blessings be upon you.